Uh, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this uh, uh, PE review session on hydraulics. Uh, the topics we will ta talk about today are listed on this slide. Uh, first, I'll review some basic uh, variables and units that we traditionally use in the field of hydraulics. And also, today's session will cover both uh, pipe hydraulics as well as a little bit of open channels, uh, mainly primarily intended for the audience who are taking the morning session. And of course, I'll review some fundamental principles uh, that are typically used in analyzing problems in hydraulics. That includes the equation of continuity, energy, and momentum equations. And then we'll spend some time on full pipe hydraulics. And then I'll wrap it up with open channel flow hydraulics, in particular, uh, two conditions called critical flow and uniform flow, and how to compute those depths. But there are some problems in the appendix that I've included. I will not include in our present session. Uh, particularly loop network analysis and things like that. So you might want to, uh, at your own uh, free time, uh, review those uh, contents there. <clears throat> First, let's look at some units. Uh, uh, most of the time I've seen in the past, based on my, uh, over the years I've taught this subject, a lot of times they all make mistakes or students make mistakes in terms of units, uh, using inconsistent units, what I call inconsistent units. So what I've taken is taking the liberty of listing uh, both in the US system and the SI system of units. Some variables, so what we call fundamental and derived units. Uh, for example, mass, length, and time, we know are fundamental in US units, in SI units, but force is the fundamental unit instead of mass in the US units. Uh, <clears throat> some of the units that you'll see, at least in terms of hydraulics, is uh, make sure that the units that you use are consistent. For example, unit of force is pound force. Uh, unit of uh, mass is a slug. In SI units, it's a kilogram, uh, meter, and so on. Unit of force, for example, is Newton. Uh, it's pound force, in, of course, in US units. The other thing we'll talk about quite a bit in this session is what we call the pressure head. Uh, and that is basically what we call P. And that is in terms of uh, specified as a foot or a head. So it's in feet or in meters. Uh, we'll also talk about pressure, of course, in the traditional units of uh, PSI. But keep in mind, PSI is not a consistent unit. Pounds per square foot is. And so is Newton per meter squared, or what we call Pascal in the SI system of units. We'll also come across uh, power units, which is uh, work done or rate of work done which is pound foot per second, or Newton meter per second in the case of SI. So notice I'm using essentially consistent units to derive the units for the power or energy. Uh, same thing with dynamic viscosity and kinematic viscosity. If you ever use these uh, quantities or compute them, make sure you stay with consistent units and you will not make a mistake. Uh, same thing with acceleration. It's all in feet and seconds and so on. Okay, so. The bottom line is, whatever formulas we use in, in the field of hydraulics, it's better to stay with uh, consistent units uh, unless you're using some kind of an empirical equation, which calls for different types of unit, uh, units to be used in the equation. Uh, I'm also going to show you a slide here comparing two systems here. One is what we call pipe flow. And here, we primarily will focus on pressurized pipe systems initially. That's what we refer to as pipe flow. But keep in mind that uh, in urban stormwater systems, for example, we do use uh, also circular pipes that flow like open channels. So what I've shown here is an illustration of the difference between them. Uh, typically, uh, the, in the case of a pipe, we measure everything with, center, with the center line of the pipe, with respect to the center line of the pipe, while as in open channel systems, we measure with respect to the bottom of the channel. For example, the flow depth, in the case of an open channel, represents P or gamma or the pressure head in terms, in terms of uh, pipe flow situation. Uh, keep in mind, the illustration on the left side shows your pipe, pipe under pressure. So if you stick a pitot, a pitot tube or a piezometer, the water will rise to what we call the pressure head or hydraulic gradient line. And I'll define these later on in my discussion. But right now, the important thing for you to focus on is there are three terms here shown in this illustration. One is Z1, which is the elevation head, we call it, or the height of the center line of the pipe from a datum, fixed datum. In the case of an open channel, that same Z represents the height to the bottom of the channel. 
And then, of course, as I said, uh, in the case of a pipe, uh, we may represent the, instead of the flow depth, we represent what is called the pressure head. That Y1 in the graphics on the left-hand side should, by the way, be P over gamma or P1 over gamma. And then we have the velocity head, which is V1 squared over 2G. That represents the kinetic energy component of the energy. Uh, in the case of open channel, you have also got V1 squared over 2G, where V1 is the average velocity. Of course, as I said, the pressure is replaced with the flow depth, uh, which is, represents the pressure head in the case of an open channel system. So we'll discuss both, uh, just to, may, to cover both aspects of uh, hydraulics. First, we'll talk about full pipe flow. In this case, the most widely used cross-section is a circular cross-section. Uh, most widely used, uh, I mean, the use encounter full pipe flow conditions mainly in water supply systems and, of course, in urban storm sewer systems when they get pressurized. If they're not pressurized, urban storm sewer systems behave like open channel systems. Uh, typical cross-section in open channel systems, we come across a trapezoidal, and a special case of that trapezoidal is a rectangular section with vertical slides, sides. There are also triangular sections. These are primarily used for small gutters, etc. Uh, so the main, uh, main uh, sections we'll talk about is trapezoidal and rectangular. <clears throat> Here's a graphic, uh, graphics of a cross section, a typical cross section in open channel systems. In this case, a trapezoidal section. Uh, some of the important hydraulic variables that you need to get familiar with in the case of an open channel cross section is, of course, the bottom width, B, the flow area A, the flow depth, and the side slope is specified as Z horizontal to one vertical. And of course, there are a couple of others based on these parameters, what we call the wetted parameter, which is basically shown as a dashed red line here is the length of the bottom of the channel that's wetted by the fluid. In this case, the dashed red line that I've shown here is the wetted parameter P. The hydraulic radius is the ratio of A over P. Uh, keep in mind, hydraulic radius does not really have a physical meaning other than the ratio of A over P in open channel systems. Well, as in a full pipe flow, we'll show you down, I'll show you down the line, it does have a physical meaning. It turns out to be the one for the pipe diameter. The hydraulic depth, A, which is sometimes used occasionally, particularly in the definition of what we call fluid number, it's equal to A over T. That's the cross-sectional area divided by the top width. There are some special cases I've shown in this insert you might want to look at. For example, for the rectangular cross-section, the area is BY or B plus 2Y. That's the bottom width plus 2 times the depth. Uh, remember, the side slopes are vertical. And the hydraulic radius is A over P, so it's the cross-sectional area is BY divided by the wetted parameter will be B plus 2Y, which is shown right here. And therefore, the hydraulic depth is A over T. Now remember, for the rectangular cross-section, the top width, which is this part right here, is equal to the bottom width, since the sides are vertical. There's also a thing called a wide rectangular channel you might want to watch out for in problems. When they use this terminology, what they're getting at is the bottom width is approximately greater than or equal to 20 times the flow depth. What, what this does to the calculation is, or computation is, it makes the hydraulic radius very, very close to the vertical flow depth Y. So R is equal to Y for a rectangular channel, wide rectangular channel, and that makes a lot of computations fairly simple. It also gives a physical interpretation of the meaning of hydraulic radius in the case of an open channel system. Otherwise, it's always defined as the ratio of flow area to the wetted parameter. Now, by the way, uh, I want to also emphasize one more thing here, and that is the in open channel systems, area, the flow area A, which is shown right here, is a function of the flow depth. That means as the flow depth changes, the flow area changes, the cross-sectional area changes. That is not the case with a full pipe flow. In a full pipe flow, the cross-sectional area is fixed, and therefore that makes computationally a lot easier to deal with a full pressurized circular pipe than to deal with an open channel system. Okay, and that's why we have two different types of hydraulic situations with these two systems. I've taken the liberty of uh, giving you, providing you a table uh, that you can use to compute cross sections. Uh, remember, in open channel systems, the flow area and the wetted perimeter, all these are functions of flow depth. So it's good to have a table like this that you can use, uh, formulas that you can use to compute the various 
hydraulic elements, I call it, of channel cross-sections. I have shown this for a rectangular section here, trapezoidal, uh, a triangular, like a gutter type of thing. And also, for a circular conduit flowing partially full, which I remember, remember I said it's uh, basically like an open channel system. It's a function of, uh, in this case, the formulas involve an angle called theta, a sector angle, which is shown in this graphics here. Uh, most engineers tend to use a nomograph, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you, like, if you don't have the nomograph or you don't want to use it, you can go ahead and use these formulas. Just keep in mind that this theta is uh, measured in radians, not in degrees. Okay, so for example, the cross-sectional area for a given flow depth is in terms of theta, which is this angle right here, which is a function of the flow depth y. So as the flow depth y changes, the angle theta will also change. Obviously, theta will go from uh, basically uh, 180 degrees uh, for half the depth. If it's zero, of course, theta will be zero, the flow depth. And then, of course, the full depth, it'll be, theta will be 360 degrees. So it's, that's the general range of theta. Uh, you could use that to calculate the cross-sectional area, et cetera. What this table does not give you is an equation for the flow depth y, which you can easily derive from, from geometry. <clears throat> now, if not, I would suggest you use this nomograph. In this case, uh, this is a very easy, good thing to take with you. Uh, it allows you to calculate the cross-sectional area and all these uh, so-called hydraulic elements for a circular conduit flowing partially full. And uh, through an example, I'll illustrate to you, or I've set up an example for you. But in general, what you need to do is, for a given depth, for example, if the flow depth is 75% of the pipe diameter, that is the Y over D naught ratio, uh, is equal to 0.75, then you can go across this graph and take any of these curves. For example, you can select the curve that's labeled A over A naught, and then get the ratio of A over A naught by going swinging up here and reading that ratio approximately, in this case, 0.82. And A0, by the way, is the cross-sectional area of a full pipe flow condition, which is pi D0 squared over 4. Those are all shown in the insert here at the bottom of this nomograph. Uh, same thing with hydraulic radius. If you want the hydraulic radius, instead of reading the curve A or A0, you go right across and, the, and read the label, read the curve labeled as uh, R or R0. So let's look at a small example to illustrate this. Uh, first, uh, let me show you what, what you can, might want to work with initially is a trapezoidal section. I've set up a small problem for you. For example, let's do the flow area here. Uh, you can send the answer through a chat box. In this case, uh, I've given you a trapezoidal channel with side slope of 2, and the bottom width is 15 feet. And for a flow depth of 5, I want you to calculate all these hydraulic elements, but right now in this present session, let's try the try to calculate the area. You might want to go back to uh, the table that uh, the slide that where I had the formulas for you, and those were given in this slide right here. So use this equation for flow area, which is b plus z y in parentheses times the flow depth y. Use that to calculate the area, and just go ahead and Send me the answer. Somebody's already worked it out. There's another question from uh, another gentleman. He says, theta is in radians, yes, uh, for the circular conduit, if you're going to use the formula. Uh, most of you are coming out with an answer for the flow area correctly, and that is C. Good. All right, you can do the wetted perimeter. That's basically the, as I said, it's a length. It's not an area. It's a length along the bottom of the uh, channel that's wetted by the fluid. The formula for that also is given in that graph, in that uh, table I just shared with you. And the hydraulic radius, of course, is A over P ratio. So please work on this. Just get comfortable with it, uh, how to calculate these elements for different flow depths. Uh, here's a circular culvert. This is where I'm going to use the nomograph now. I'll show you, in this case, again, it's an open channel system because the flow depth, in this case, one I'm giving you, is equal to 3 feet. The pipe diameter is 4 feet, so you know that it's flowing partially. And uh, in order to say, for example, to calculate the area uh, associated with a flow depth of 3 feet, we'll go ahead and use the nomograph. To get there, so this is number one here. Here are various alternatives. So first thing you calculate is uh, 